In the last episode, showing the concept of CQRS applied to distributed systems, I talked about that big bubble in the diagram, the so-called event store, and what that is. So the event store, as the name suggests, well, stores events in a persistent way. So it's like a database for all the events that happened uh, to your event source system. And it also publishes the events to the consumers in the distributed system way. That means as you replicate your system using the read and write um, separations, you have consumers for all the events that happens and your event store publish this, the events. And doing so, it of course needs to keep track of all the um, published data for each and every event. So how does it roughly work internally? You could totally implement an event store using a relational database system. So implement it yourself and use that. And actually um, a traditional relational database system, database system uses its transaction log as an event store. So in, it internally applies that model actually. So for example, if you have an events table, then this would means you have an event type, like order placed, order accepted, and so on and so forth. And several things that, that are needed. Uh, first of all, the version. As your events are a stream of events, of things that happen to your application um, at a time, that means you, you have like, like in a um, VCS system, like in a Git or a subversion, you have commit versions. Like that is the latest version. As you apply the events to your system as diffs, so this is just what happens to your system and now the system is in another state applying that event. Therefore, it has a version. And of course, it um, has some event data, like um, how does the order uh, look uh, like that is placed and so on and so forth. And if you think about the publish sta uh, status, so it also has a publish flag, like has the event been published reliably, asynchronously. So the events get stores, it's stored in, for example, let's take a um, relational database in one transaction, that's fine. And later on, a publisher comes and publishes this event. This is, of course, a really um, simplified version, but just to get the idea how that could work using a relational database. And if, if you put that a little bit further and say you have, um, you can distinguish your events for example, uh, something with something like an aggregate ID and the aggregate, yes, the terms comes from DDD, domain driven design. Actually, I don't want to talk too much about uh, to about that topic because um, potentially it doesn't uh, or theoretically it doesn't have a lot to do with um, CQRS. Um, having that said, it's often applied uh, together, but you could totally do event sourcing, event-driven architectures and CQRS without and DDD and all these names like aggregates. But let's just uh, take the aggregate ID as, um, as an identifier, for example, for an order. So for some domain objects, you could also say domain ID or topic or however you want to separate your IDs to then be able to query the events using um, this separation using this um, identifier. So then all the events for that match on that identifier gets returned and so on and so forth. And now the way how it works, you store the events and then later on the events get published and you can also um, query the events from the event store like in a database. Normally you wouldn't do that, but imagine if a um, new system comes up that doesn't have something stored in its internal view, in its internal cache, then of course it needs to apply all the events from day zero to get to the current state. That means give me everything starting from last version zero and then apply it. Because the thing how it works with the versions that you can say, okay, I am currently at this version and please give me everything that happened afterwards. And now I will subscribe um, to it as well and then I can rely on that everything um, every uh, event arrives into my system in that reliable way and in order 
Having that said, it can be quite cumbersome and a lot of effort for the system to do so, applying all the hundreds and thousands events starting from day zero. If you have a lot of them, imagine that can take a lot of time. And this is actually true for all the event source systems. So what you can do to solve that is to introduce snapshots. That you say, okay, I have my events, that is the single source of truth, and if I would apply all the thousands of events starting from day one, then I get to the current state. But that's also true if I take some place in the middle or at the end where I just take a snapshot of the current state of the system and then later on take that snapshot as a new base and calculate the new events starting from that point. And as the events are immutable, that should not change anything. So even later on, you can take any point in time and say, okay, I now calculate just this snapshot, this status quo of that version. And then later on, I start from that and apply the events. And that snapshot gets persisted. So if I fire up a new system, for example, and I only need that snapshot and the reference to which a version it points to, and then I can tell the event store, okay, event store, please give me all the events starting from uh, version 103, and you save some time. And if you think about that, this is the, uh, the way how your version control system works. So in Git, if you check out something, then it's just the current snapshot, the current state of quo of version something. And if you apply them, the next one, then you get to the next state. But you could also equally well rewind to day zero and then apply all the commits in Git one after another. And you get to the same status. So this is just of saving time. I point to a version and that they are valid at a point of time. And that is actually quite important because it means you can calculate the snapshot at any given point of time. It's not the latest one, it's just a snapshot that points to that version that was true at that point. And you can then later on um, calculate from, from, this, uh, from this point on. If you think of uh, money transactions in a bank, this is also the way how they work. So depending on, on your bank, you may only see the latest transaction of the last so and so many days, 90 days for example, and then you have some point where you just have the current balance of the account as it was just given at that time, as if you started at that balance. And then saves you a lot of calculation time. So this is the, point, uh, the concept of snapshots that solve the problem around event sourcing. However, to sum it up, the event store, it has to publish the events exactly once in every, and that concept, for example, for Apache Kafka is called consumer groups that are con um, that are subscribed to the event store. That means, for example, if, and that um, I told that in the last episode, if you have this event handler that handles the event exactly only once, then you have to have a consumer group of that and all of the right side instances subscribe to that group and only one then wins. But that has to happen in a reliable fashion. As opposed to the updating consumer groups that just take all of the uh, events and update their internal view, they um, have to get all of the events and everybody has to get all of the events. So having that said, if you use the concept of consumer groups, you would have one group per update consumer and a single group for the event handlers that perform then subsequent commands. And you use the event version for later on applying the snapshots. So you get the snapshot, which is then the new base, what I just explained, and then you tell the event store, okay, please give me the events that happened afterwards. And that's basically how the event stores uh, internally work. So as I said, you could implement them using a relational database, for example, for yourself. You then just need the database, you store all the events, you have a publishing mechanism that makes sure that everything is published, for example, in the consumer groups, and you could um, use the complexity as needed, so how distributed in your system is and how many consumer groups you need, or topics, or um, anything else like that, and then publish them in, in a reliable fashion, asynchronously. 
So what implementations are out there? As I said, you could use a relational database system. Um, there is also the, I think it was the original event store called event store from getEventStore.com, or what I will later use in my examples, Apache Kafka for persisting um, and uh, publishing events in a reliable fashion. So now I hope you get the idea of how an event store works.